LAVU 2020 is now available for community and professional use, so it's time for another What's New video. There are loads of really neat features that have been introduced in LAVU 2020, so make sure you stick around to the end so you don't miss any. I've created a demo VI to go through all of the new features and I'll leave a link to this VI in the description so you can download the code yourself and give it a go. Right, so let's go through these in quick succession. So first item, we have a select item for enums and rings. So if we have an enum with loads and loads of items, so this one has 100 items, we can right click, go to select item, and then search for a particular item. So I want item number 60 and click enter, and now item 60 is there. Notice how I didn't have to type out the word item colon 60, I could just type in a part of that phrase. Okay, next item. Similar to the previous one, we have showcase for event structures and case structures. We can right click the border and go to showcase. And again, we can go to a particular case, let's say number 60, and we see case 60. The same will work for the event structure. We can right click, showcase, and then select a particular case. Right, number three. We can rearrange cases. We had this feature in older versions, but it was nowhere near as good. So if we right click and go to rearrange cases, I can now select multiple items and move them about. I can scroll down, select multiple items, delete them, I could sort all cases and that will arrange all cases alphabetically. Then click OK. And we can do the same for the event structure as well. Right, next one, we have the clear variant. This is a welcome feature. It doesn't seem like a big thing, but essentially we can now right click variant controls and indicators and clear its data. Let's have a look at the front panel where we have variant control indicator. We can go down data operations and clear data. So this is great for if we've just been testing this VI and we want to test it with different data or no data, we can just right click data operations and clear data. Perfect. But one thing I have noticed is that we can't do it with a constant. Let me know in the comments if you find a way. Next, this is an awesome debugging tool. We can actually find out what the issue is when we get a broken run arrow. So if I take this VI out, Notice how the calling VI now has a broken run arrow. Let's click it or click Control L or Control R. We now have a root cause. So root cause dependency is broken. So if we click this, it takes us to the root of the issue. So I can see there are no terminals wired up here. So I'll wire in some constants. Let me know in the comments what that quick drop shortcut was. And so now we fixed this VI, the calling VI is mended. So we didn't need to rummage down several layers to find out what the one VI is that's broken. It took us straight there. Okay, next we have cluster size. So this is the array to cluster function where we used to have to right click and go to cluster size, but now we can just double click and select a cluster size of whatever you want and click okay. The next item is hide the last item in the ring. So if we have a text ring like this, where we're displaying three items, we can now right click and hide last item when running. And when that's enabled, we can have done this, done that, but the last item doesn't appear, which is working on this. So if you're programmatically updating this ring as more things become available for the user to see, we well, don't need to show the last item. So this is gonna come in handy. Next, we have clean up broken wires. So let's say we have a float going into a string. Only the wire that needs to be broken is broken. You can see that this float or this double, that's still perfectly fine. And we can just remove this single broken wire. Now this is a feature I've been waiting for. So if we have a really small event structure like that, we don't need to show the left hand node in Levy 2020. So we can right click visible items and hide event node for this case. And you can see the left hand data node is no longer there. However, I've noticed with filter events, this option isn't available. So if we have panel close with the question mark, 
which is a type of filter event, we don't get the option to hide the data node. But if we go to a non-filter event, such as menu selection, we can hide the data node. But we wouldn't be able to for this filter event with the question mark. Okay, next we can hide the iteration terminal for a for loop. So if we have a small piece of code like this, and this iteration terminal is getting in the way, we can right click the for loop and deselect iteration terminal. Makes your code nice and neat. So did you know that in previous versions of LabVIEW, you've been able to click control and swap the inputs of functions like this. However, up until 2020, we weren't able to do that with just a single function. But now in 2020, we can swap the values just with a single item. This is a new feature which I'm going to be using all the time. It allows you to change the icon of a VI to its name. So this VI is called change the icon dot VI. But if I click control space control K, notice how the icon of this VI has just changed. So that was control shift control K. We could also right click the icon event set icon to VI name. As someone who uses a lot of quick drop shortcuts in LabVIEW, the following addition is really nice. They've made lots of improvements to the insert quick drop shortcut for string, boolean and numeric data types. So now I can much more reliably enter an array function like this insert into array. So next also to do with quick drop, you can now use context help whilst browsing quick drop. So if you press control H to open up quick drop, you, it will now show you what the items are that you're hovered over in quick drop. Next, we now have the ability to store multiple errors on the error wire. So take this for example, we have this error and we have another catastrophic error. With the new merge errors function, we can right click and retain all errors. And if we do that, we still get a single error cluster out, but in the source, it stores it as a JSON string and then we can actually get an array of errors out. So these two errors merged together can give us this array of errors. Also in the multiple errors sub panel, you'll also find items to add attributes to error clusters. And you'll find this sub panel within dialog and user interface, even multiple errors. Next, LabVIEW now has TLS support or transport layer security support. The TLS functions can be used with the TCP functions to create a secure connection before you start sending data. And there's some examples of how to use this in Example Finder. The next addition to LabVIEW 2020, you'll find in the Data Manipulations palette and it's the Byte Array Checksum VI. This VI allows us to take a hash of multiple different types of a group of data and it will return a hash code like you see here. Now what this allows us to do is make sure the integrity of the data that we've either stored in memory or on disk remains intact. So if I changed any of these values, the checksum wouldn't link up and we would know that the data has been compromised. LabVIEW actually uses a technique like this called MD5 for their project providers. So when you write a project provider, like the one I have here, that allows me to write documentation, I write an any file like this, and then I have to come up with a hash checksum at the end, and provided that checksum is correct, LabVIEW will load it into memory and allow you to use it. And the final case I want to go through are the new functions. We have the get memory status VI, which returns values for memory allocated to LabVIEW, total physical memory, and free physical memory. Next item, we have the create NIGUID function, or global unique identifier function, where if we run the VI, we get an alphanumeric string, which is going to be a unique string, like this. Next, we have range limits for type. So here we can insert a data type and it will return the maximum value and the minimum value. So we could put in an integer type like this, a float type like this, so a single, double, extended double, or even a fixed point numeric data type like we see here. And it will return the maximum value that's possible and the minimum value that's possible. Next, we have a super interesting VI, which is enum to array of enums.vim. So it's a malleable VI. 
With this VI, we can insert an enum with, let's say, three states, item one, two, and three, and it will return an array of states, so as item one, item two, item three. This VI now allows us to, inside a for loop, quickly iterate through all of those states. I'm sure there are other uses for it as well, but this is the use case that I'm going to be using it for. And the last VI we have on here is the GetLavu class parent and member VI information VI. So if we have a variant that's holding class information, we could put that variant into this function and it will return data about the parent, class, or interface. So interfaces were also introduced in LabVIEW 2020. And if you're not sure what interfaces are, I highly recommend you check out my other video introducing them. Because the biggest thing that LabVIEW 2020 introduced was interfaces. Interfaces are going to change the way we work with things like Actor Framework. They're going to change things like hardware abstraction layers. They allow us to write better software following the solid principles. So you can look forward to upcoming videos about interfaces. So make sure you like, comment and subscribe so you don't miss out. Cheers everyone and I'll catch you again soon.